So about six weeks ago, I got this sort of mysterious email from uh, some folks at an agency called Edelman, and they said, hey, we noticed you make grind boxes, and can you make one that has a lid that opens up and potentially do 10 of them? And I was like, yeah, sure, why not? I mean, we could make anything, really. So then after some back and forth and signing an NDA, they explained the project, told me it was going to be for this commemorative Nike eBay dunk and that these were going to be sort of a showcase piece to have the shoes in as well as like a little plaque and this uh, commemorative saw. So we kind of went back and forth on that for a while and then we figured out what the shoe box was going to look like, how it was going to function, having that pull out drawer on the bottom. The design initially kind of like bounced around quite a bit. The scale of it was kind of like really up in the air. They didn't know if it was going to be like, you know, two and a half feet big where it could fit on a shelf or if it was going to be something very large that's like more friendly for skating. And then we kind of went back and forth. There was maybe like five or six renditions of it. Like at one point it had a, a wedge that pulled out and then like a rail that folded up. And then we kind of landed on kind of simplifying it back to that shoebox look and feel. But then having that little pull out drawer on the bottom was like a nice little X factor, especially because it kind of, when that bottom ledge is out, it kind of looks like a two stair, like stoop that would be found in the streets. So I thought that was really cool, like finding a way to differentiate, like this isn't just the skatable shoebox that's been done for like the last couple decades. And then having it open up and displaying everything, that was really cool. And so we went back and forth on like how to showcase the shoes and the saw and have everything sit in there secure. And then we landed on foam and a lot of the foam manufacturers that I was kind of shopping around, it was like a softer foam. So I was thinking like, given that this is a skatable shoe box and it needs to be rigid, we wanted to go with something a little denser. So we reached out to a company who actually makes foam inserts for like Pelican cases. So guys will take their whole kit of like all their cameras and their lenses and then they'll um, you know, cut out perfect, nice, snug slots for all their gear to go into. So that was really nice doing this just to kind of match the aesthetic of like it's wood, it has metal and angle iron and you're seeing some screw heads. Going with that denser foam kind of just made more sense in my head. It was really cool that we were reached out to on this project. Like I'm sure there's plenty of other people that might be a, a better fit to make this, but it was really important for them that it could be durable enough to withstand skateboarding and, you know, the constant trucks hitting and abuse and manuals and they wanted it to where this thing is still going to function after it skates so nothing could be like chintzy which is essentially why we were selected to do this job over like a, a prop designer or something just because you know we understand like what's the metal to use even down to the scale there was a lot of back and forth on that you know i was like hey you guys should make these big enough to where it makes sense to skate because if it was any smaller i mean it's only the length of like maybe a couple inches bigger than a skateboard, which is still nice. Like you still have enough time to like get on and maybe flip out if you want. And it's like, we wanted to make sure the height was just right. We wanted to make sure that we didn't lose the scale of a shoe box. So this box actually is scaled to a real shoe box. Like I looked up the common dimensions of a sneaker shoe box and it was like eight by 14 by five or whatever it was. And then took those and then just blew it up. So this still retains those same dimensions, which is kind of cool. That way there's like just no debate over to like, hey, this is a shoe box. It's not just some random box that's like holding cool sneakers. On a traditional box that we make, we create sides and then we rib it with two by fours and that's what provides all the structure. So it was a little challenging in this aspect that we didn't have the luxury of using two by fours as the structure. So we're just utilizing the lid and then we had to give it hinges and give it the ability to open and have the interior hollow to display the shoes and the saw and uh, you know leave enough room for the foam and then also leave enough room to pull out that bottom ledge. So we kind of went back and forth on like, all right, what's the best way to do that? What's gonna retain the structural integrity? So in some of the areas we just doubled up three quarter inch plywood and then underneath the foam there's pretty much like a base that goes across so that was nice to kind of squeeze everything together basically that three quarter inch plywood that's going from edge to edge which is also holding the foam 
is now creating some structure. And then we had just enough room underneath to have that pull out drawer slide. And we just created a way that, you know, there's the handhold obviously on the front and then it slid along the edges and then there's like a stop block so that the step can't pull out too far. So we just, we wanted it to be really intuitive and just not too like clunky. So that was really fun. Like those challenges of designing something that's skatable, that's beautiful was a really cool process. We made the prototype. I did make it by hand. So I designed it in Google SketchUp. You know, it looks all good in there. And sometimes when you go from like a 3D rendering to actually physically making it, there's gonna be things that you didn't account for, like how your plywood laps or how things are gonna attach. So yeah, I made the one, did it all by hand. And then, you know, it had probably four or five rounds of like tweaking and shaving things off and trimming things and mounting the coping differently and making sure that like there was enough play and gaps around the edges of that lid. And then once we got it exactly perfect and dialed. I had Scotty who runs our CNC pretty much just pull out the tape measure on every single like nook and cranny of that thing. And then he took that over into the 3D program that he works with to create the CNC files and then made that. And once we had that, boom, we just were able to make 10 of them like that. You know, it's just like hit and go on the CNC, which was awesome. So, I mean, there was a lot that led up to be able to make it that simple, but yeah, it's, it was just super dialed in the end. There was a lot of things that using the CNC made a lot easier to get perfect, like notching out, I think it was 330 seconds of wood out of the top and the side where that angle iron sits so that it's not just sitting on top and you have that bump. So it's just like that much more aesthetical and really nice and polished to have it sit down, but you still have like a 16th bump of that angle iron, which was cool. And then also, you know, getting those little finger slots that go on the ends of the shoe box to just line up just right. And then getting that oval cut for the handhold on the ledge to pull out. So all that stuff just like is perfect. And then when we're putting it together, I mean, it, there's not much room for human error and every box is exactly the same and just looking really good. Yeah, when it came time to figure out what these things were gonna be coated with, we did go back and forth on paint or a stain doing die cut vinyl. At one point we talked about maybe laser engraving the entire thing. So that kind of bounced around quite a bit. And on the prototype, we did use a vinyl wrap. It's like a super sticky 3M product. It's the same stuff they wrap cars with. We knew that it was gonna stick well, even though it's being skated. When we first put it on, on the prototype, we did notice that some of like the wood grain was still coming through. So on the 10 that are being sold, the legit ones, we ended up doing a polyurethane coating, filled all the screw holes with wood filler, sanded that smooth, then gave it two coats of a poly and then gave it a light sand. So now we have this like perfectly smooth surface to apply the vinyl on. Got those on looking really good. Got all our edges nice and clean. I'm really happy with it, just the way it came out, like the sheen of it. I think it just makes everything like pop that much more. It's just really fun to look at and touch. And yeah, just a really satisfying project. So this was really cool because it's a little bit outside of our wheelhouse because you know we don't do like finely tuned finish work like this. But at the end of the day, it was a box. It's like just a box to skate, but it has way more bells and whistles than what we normally do. But it was a really fun process to just sort of be challenged and having a little bit of creative control and working with a really cool team that valued our input. I mean, that was a big part of the reason they hired us. They were like, we want somebody like, that understand skateboarding. So being given sort of permission and them trusting us in creating something really cool was fun. And it kind of just like opened my eyes to the things that we are capable of. Like, yeah, we make skateboard ramps, but at the end of the day, we can make a lot of things. And like that CNC that we have is really powerful. I mean, we can cut out logos, we can engrave things, we can do all sorts of crazy ways for things to connect and pocket together. All in all, I mean, this, this project was really special to me because it just brought to my attention like what our team is capable of and what kind of things we can make. I've always been aware that like dunks are this thing and people sell them and resell them and all that and collect them. You know, I've maybe like discounted that whole side of skateboarding in my head. I'm like, oh, sneakerhead stuff, whatever. But it was cool like getting a deep dive into the history of Nike SB and Sandy Bodecker 
and learning about the Bodecker Foundation and, and all that they do. Really eye-opening to hear, you know, that eBay was involved that long ago. Just like how much history the Dunk has and how much history Nike SB has and how like Sandy Bodecker was revolutionary and and creating this program that's now like just this powerhouse within skateboarding and the world of footwear. To be a part of something like that and having, you know, small amounts of creative control here and there and being trusted with even just, you know, having these sneakers and these saws in our possession and them trusting us with transporting them and getting them to the video shoot and all those things is just a really gratifying experience. Designing this box was super fun. It was nice because it was like a challenge outside of just, you know, all the ramps that we make, I've designed years ago and we made the CNC files years ago and the guys are just banging those out, which is awesome. But it's cool being given something that's unique and something that like really challenges me and gets like my creative juices flying. So that was, that was really fun. Yeah.